my name is Lorraine. I'm from the Federal University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, and I am my research assistant at Google Marby Space. And my mentor is the Dr. Fati Karui. And the research project I'm working on is the characterizing and color ca cataloging the microbiome of the International Space Station. So this is this research is part of the microbiome tracking project, which I will talk in, about now. And basically, the objective of this project is to be able to understand about the microbiome microbes that in, in, innovated the ISS, analyze the interactions between them and their devel development and the impacts of these microbes generated in, on human health. So this research is managed and supported by the Space Biology Project at NASA um, Research Center. And this project is to be divided into three parts. So the microbiome tracking project one, focusing characterizing microorganisms in the air and on the surface of specific locations on the ISS and started in 2015 and 2016. And basically, we study samples in three different uh, occasions for over a uh, 15 month period. And the microbiome project two is studying the microorganisms present on the space stations between 2017 and 2018. And the, sa the samples are collected with a cotton swab before and before and during after space flight for for many, many surfaces of the astronaut bodies, including the mouth and nose. And the environment sample, samples are also being collected on the surface and uh, uh, aerial sites around the stations, uh, around the stations. And for the first time, virus are studied in the microbiome tracking, and in addition with the bacteria and fungi. And in the microbiome tracking, Three, the focus is on the search of functionally disease causing in bacteria and fungi. And this time, the research is specifically looking at the genetic changes that occur during the space flight and can increase the ability of microbes to, to cause disease and resist antibiotics. But then, what exactly are the goals of the of this research? Why is NASA so interested in studying these microbes? There is many many goals, but basically the main uh, one the but but basically the main ones are understand the risk to crow the crow wolf and close the environment for infections and illness understand the similarities and difference between microbial communities on ISS, study into how microbes adapt to microgravity and space flying, space flying streaming environment, and identify which microbes flourish into space flight. So in this image, we can see a little about the internal structure of the crew quarters. And the crew quarters in a permanent personal space for crew members to sleep, performing personal recreations and communications. And the crew quarters provide a visual light and acoustical isolations for the crew member. It was in the crew quarters that a large part of the micro, micro samples uh, that are being analyzed and were, uh, were collected. And what, are, what is the ISS environment like? It is important to remember that it is an extreme environment. And this is one of the reasons that we are looking to understand how the microbes behave on the ISS. So the environment is characterized by high vacuum, microgravity, extreme of temperature, meteoroids, space debris, ionosphere plasma, and ultraviolet and ionizing radiations. And 
The other point is to understand how the, the crew is affected by all these extreme conditions. So what's happened to the human body when the subjects to all this extreme? And this is where we come to the questions. Why is it important to study microorganisms? Uh, immediately answers we, that you can give is because it is a way to better understand ourselves and the life. But the health of astronauts and the crew is uh, greatly altered because of the extreme environment. So these extreme conditions can affect the blood, bones, muscles, and looking to understand how the microorganisms can affect the health of a crew, it's also a fundamental question. But microorganisms are not always harmful to our health. So one uh, area of research that is growing a lot is studying of our human microbiome. And so the human microbiome are the bacteria that inhabit our body in specific areas and then often help us to, to stay healthy. So these organisms impact human physiology, so it's a, a good thing. But now that I have told you uh, a little about the microbiome project, I will go into more details about the activities I did in the research project. And basically, I analyzed four strains of microbacteria that are isolated in ISS crew quarters using bioinformatics tools. So the samples are part of the myo, my, microbiome tracking project too. But the first, uh, what are the microbacteria? So microbacteria is a bacterium genus belongs to the family Microbacteriaceae. If someone's important characteristics are they are very positive, nanospore form, and hold shaping bacteria. But then to analyze this strain, I use some bioinformatics tools performing a series of tests, tests in order to help character, characterizing the microbacteria. And one of these tests consisted in calculating the values of any and DDA. But first you have to talk about what are these values are and their importance. So any values, it's mean average nucleotide identity. It's a measure of nucleotide level genomic similarity between the code regions of two genomes. And he's indicated the level of the proximity between genomes because of that, it's useful to, to, vary, to verify taxonomy identities to prokaryotic genomes. And the DDA values, that means digital DNA, DNA hybridization, it's helpful because, because uh, yeah, the DDA values have been used by bacterial taxonomists to determine uh, relatedness between strains. So, to calculate the any values, I use a PIDO program, program, and the DDA values, I use the NCBI platform. And with these values, I build this table relating the any and DDA values for each organism. And with this, this table, we can already uh, we can we can already make a very important ana analysis, and we can see that any values between the strain and microorganisms pyroxidants is ninety three percent, which is a high value. So this is indicated that these strain are highly correlated with these species. So you can see over that. So the next steps were to build a phylogenetic tree for these strains. So the first was based on the 16S and the 16S ribosomal RNA is the component of 30S subunit of prokaryote. And basically the 16S is a gene is conserved in bacteria and 
contain hyper variable regions that can provide species a spe specific signature sequence. And because of that, the use of in, in identifications in bacteria in phylogenetic students. And using the bioinformatic tools again, I built this phylogenetic tree bases on 16S genomes using the IK3 software. And here we can see again the high correlations between the strain and the microbacterium paraoxidants, since they are very close, just over there. And another point is that you can also see that in general, how these four strains correlated with the other microbacterium species being able to infer better that is a novel species or not. The other step was to build a phylogenetic tree based on the JI or B gene, which is, a, is the house keep genus. That means are regions in a genome that tend to be highly conserved. And because of that, it's a powerful molecular tool for identifying and classifying bacteria. And again, I've, again, I built the phylogenetic tree using the IK3 software. And you can see again the the closest between the strains and the peroxidase. But then what is the conclusion? So I still haven't completed, completely finishes the analysis. And like every scientific, scientific process, I found some difficulties and errors in the mural, but the ana analysis show us that these strains are a novel species belongs to the genus Mycobacteria, which is in which is why we this phylogenetic analysis are extremely important. So just to to end with the microbiology is slogan, just because you can see it doesn't mean that it's not there. Is that because the microbiology is a giant word that can help us to understand uh, life better. And I would like it to thank you, my mentor, Dr. Pachi Karuya, for his patience and for encouraging me to present today. And I would like to thank you, Bumarbo, with Bumarbo Space, for this incredible opportunity. Fantastic presentation. I see we have a question from Arunava already. Yeah, uh, hi, Lauren. Uh, it was a great presentation. Uh, so uh, some studies have shown that uh, uh, pathogenic microorganisms uh, in space appear to be more virulent uh, as compared to uh, their counterparts uh, or not. So like, I just wanted to know whether uh, the strains that you have worked with are pathogenic and whether uh, they have shown uh, to be more virulent in space. Um, so I have some issues doing the phylogenetic tree, so it's not already to totally done. So I have, uh, I already don't have so much sure about the exact positions of the microbacteria in, of the strain in the phylogenetic tree. So I don't know if I understand well the question, <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, yeah, I understand, yeah, thanks. And I see Sandra has his hand up. Go ahead, Sandra. Lauren, thank you for your presentation. Uh, do you know if the microbial population on the International Space Station has been constant or is it getting worse over time? I'm just wondering how much cleaning is required. I have to clean my kitchen counter every evening to make sure it doesn't get bad. <laughs> so I'm wondering how much cleaning they have to do on the International Space Station to maintain a population of microbes that's acceptable because otherwise I would imagine it's just getting worse all the time. So um, I don't know how to answer. I don't know the exact answer, but they have a control to in the ISS. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how to answer the English. Sorry, my English is, is really bad. Oh, no, don't worry. Your English is, is very good. 